Let's look at the multi-dock in more detail. By default, it's docked at the bottom of Sono with the console view already docked in it. If you click on the console close button on the console tab, the multi-dock will be empty and cannot be opened. To be able to reopen it, we need to dock a view, which we can do by opening any of the views from the views menu or pressing a shortcut key for a view. We can also drag any existing windows into the multi-dock. Notice that the dock area is reached, it turns blue to indicate that releasing the mouse button now will dock the object. We can stop the dock from happening however by holding down the control key. Note that the track view in Inspector cannot be docked. Let's open a piano roll view known as the PRV. We now have a multi-dock with three tab views in it. As already mentioned, we can maximize the multi-dock by pressing Shift D and pressing that key combination again will restore it to its previous size. We hide it or reshow it by pressing D and we can switch tabs by pressing Ctrl and Shift with the left or right arrow keys. Alternatively, click on the tab for the view we want. If we wish to see additional instances of a view, we need to lock the existing one. We do this by right clicking on the tab and selecting Lock Contents. Now if we open an additional view, we get a second view of the piano roll. This can be helpful for viewing multiple tracks in their own window. Note the only view that cannot have multiple copies is the console view. If you don't like the multi-dock docked to either the top or bottom of the screen, you can choose to float the view. We do this by clicking on the docking option icon and selecting undock. We can now drag this window to wherever we wish and even onto a different monitor if we have one. If while dragging a window around, it looks like it's about to dock, and you'll know this because a blue rectangle appears, remember you can stop it from docking by holding the control key down. The floating multi-dock window can still be hidden and shown by pressing D. However, if you wish to resize it, you'll need to use the regular window methods of either click dragging on an edge, or using the maximize, minimize and restore buttons in the title bar. All views will by default open in the multi-dock. We can, however, undock a view from there. We do this by right-clicking on the tab of the view we wish to undock and selecting Undock. This will produce a floating window containing the undocked view. This window, however, is a regular OS window and will not respond to the D shortcut. If you wish to constrain this window so it cannot be moved outside of the main Sono program, you need to select Disable Floating from the regular Windows control menu. It can be redocked at any stage by selecting a choice from this menu or by dragging it back into the multi-dock. It's possible to do this with any views that are in the multi-dock. To redock the multi-dock itself, check either of the docking positions from the docking options menu or drag it back to one of the docking areas at the top or bottom of the track view. How much space it takes at the top or bottom is decided by where the mouse cursor is when it is released. If the mouse cursor is over to the left hand edge of the screen, it will dock to the left edge of the screen and extend to the centre right. If the mouse cursor is over to the far right of the screen, it will dock to the right hand edge of the screen and extend to the left centre. If the mouse cursor is in the centre of the screen, but not too close to the edge, it will dock between left centre and right centre. If we move the mouse cursor down closer to the screen edge, it will dock full width. The blue highlight area will always show where it's going to dock. We'll see more uses for the multi-dock, including some not so obvious uses later. We've already seen the control bar in use a couple of times, so let's take a closer look. The control bar is made up of one or more modules. It can be hidden, docked at the top or bottom, 
all floated. It's hidden and shown by pressing C. And it can be floated by either click and dragging it down into the view, or by right clicking in one of the gripping areas and selecting that option from the menu. For now, I'll redock it at the top. Which modules are visible can be selected by right clicking in a non icon area of the control bar and selecting that from the context menu. Not all modules are visible at once, some may be off screen. These are marked as such in the context menu. The quickest way to show an off screen module is to enable it, or if it's already enabled, disable and then re enable it. It will replace the last module in the view. Modules can be dragged into any order that you want by clicking and holding on the gripper area to the left of the module. There are several modules for various functions. We'll look at some in detail here and the others as they become relevant. One of the main ones is the transport module. We can use the transport module to control playback and now time position as well as view and set tempo and time signature. The playback controls are standard transport controls with play, stop, rewind and fast forward and RTZ or return to start and go to end. The slider shows the current now time position and can be used to move it by click and dragging. The record button will have no effect until at least one track is armed for recording. Left click and hold on the record button to select between record and step record. Clicking on step record will open the step record dialog. Right clicking provides a shortcut to global recording preferences. The time display section shows several bits of useful information. The current now time in your preferred format and switch between these formats by clicking on the time itself. Alternatively, right click to produce the menu. It also doubles as an information display for some operations, such as a progress bar when mixing down for audio. We've already seen this in use when we were syncing external modules. Just to the left of the now time is where the dropout indicator appears if a dropout has occurred. We looked at minimizing dropouts in the audio interface setup section. The information at the bottom from left to right is the audio engine state. It's either running when lit, or unlit is when it's stopped. It can also be turned on and off from here. The reset button will release any stuck MIDI notes and the icon will flash if that happens. The sample rate and bit depth is for information only. They are set within preferences. The current tempo is displayed and this can be changed by left clicking on it. The meter is displayed here and this can be changed by clicking on it and using the meter key signature dialog box. To the right of the display area are three icons, all relate to the metronome. One for turning it on and off during playback, the other for on and off while recording, and the other opens the metronome preferences. It's also possible to open this preference box by right clicking on either of the two on off buttons. The mix module contains the global MSR buttons as well as several option buttons relating to those. Mute will mute or unmute all tracks, as well as light to show that there is at least one mute active. Solo will solo and unsolo all tracks, as well again light if at least one solo is active within the project. There are a couple of modes available here. The first is exclusive solo. By default, you can solo more than one track at a time. Exclusive solo will only allow one solo track at a time. So when this is active, if you click on a track or bus solo button, any existing solo tracks or buses have their solo status canceled. Dim solo mode is best described as a preset volume reduction mode. 
any solo tracks play at normal playback level and the remaining non-solo tracks play at a reduced level. The level reduction is set in the audio playback and recording preferences and we looked at how to set that earlier. Arm unarm will unarm all tracks for recording as well as light if at least one track is armed for recording. Input echo on off will turn input echo on or off on all tracks as well as light to show if at least one track has input echo active. The PDC icon will enable or disable live input plug-in delay compensation. Overriding PDC will remove any latency that you may experience when live tracking and using input monitoring. The recorded data will still be placed correctly in sync with any existing audio, but you will need to mute the existing audio while using the PDC override as it won't be in sync with the live tracks you are monitoring. The effects icon will bypass all effects in a project, including the Pro Channel. Envelope offset mode is used to turn offset mode on or off and will also light to show the current envelope's offset state. The global read bypass button will bypass all automation read states on tracks and buses regardless of their individual settings. The global write button will light if any write enables are armed on any tracks or buses. Clicking this button will clear all write automations of existing write states. Don't worry if you're unsure of any of these terms, they will all be explained later.